Right, we're back again and we're going to now take the ammonia problem a little bit further, okay? Um, just, just one sort of thing before we just move on and, and we'll see it in some other reactions as well. But when we, we ended off with the exothermic and the endothermic, right? Just bear in mind that an exothermic reaction is what we call spontaneous, which means it's going to happen, okay? It's a naturally occurring reaction. That we'll see a bit later on in some of the other chemistry we're going to do. Right. Let's have a look at the next part of this, this, this ammonia problem, all right? And as I said, we're going to try and cover as much as possible in one single type of problem, all right? And they say, right, um, we've done that. And it says, right, now discuss the shape of the ammonia molecule, giving reasons also the electric configuration, electron configuration and the Lewis diagram of the ammonia molecule, right? And let's just go through it. So... First of all, let's look at the electron configuration of this, and there we go, and we've got N2, okay? We know that N2 is a nitrogen gas, and we've got those bond like that, and we broke those bonds. Now, we also had the H2, which was a single bond like that, rather my bad, not that guy's not in there. We got those guys single bond. Then they formed NH3. Okay, we've got our three hydrogens. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to look and see, okay, are we polar, are we non-polar, etc., etc., because they've asked us to comment on the molecule. Right, let us check the polarity. And once again, just to recapitulate, let's have a look here. Remember, we're going to look at the nitrogen and the hydrogen, and we're going to say the electronegativity of nitrogen is going to be equal to 3.0, and the electronegativity of hydrogen is going to be equal to 2.1. Therefore, the delta electronegativity is going to be equal to 0.9, which means we've got a polar covalent bond, right? So that means, remember the electron sharing issue that we're going to go through now? Let's have a look and see over here now. On this molecule that we've got, we've got the electron configuration of nitrogen, right? The electron configuration of nitrogen, nitrogen is number seven. Remember, it's element number seven, okay? That means it's got seven electrons. So let's put them in. Nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3, right? To draw the electron configure, or rather to draw the Lewis diagram, you only draw the valence shell electrons, which means I've got nitrogen, and we've got over here, we've got to have five, one, two, three, four, five, which then means that's what she looks like. And along comes the hydrogen and bonds in like so. Okay, that's essentially what we've got. And we said it's polar. The hydrogen obviously is going to be equal to 1s1. And essentially there we have it. That gives us the electron configuration, that gives us the Lewis diagram of it. Therefore, let's have now have a look at the shape and have a look why the shape is as it is, right? First of all, we've got, if we imagine, we've got space, a plane, right? We've got three hydrogen in that plane, and we've got on top there, remember the name of these guys? We've got the, the lone pair. Okay. Okay. Always think of those as those are the ones that came with the nitrogen atom, okay? So what happened here is that these electrons are permanently, if you like, in orbit over here like that, right? So they've got their orbital at the top. Then we've got a hydrogen and a hydrogen and another hydrogen. But as we said, it is, it is polar, which means that the electron doesn't spend its time equally shared between, neither does it spend its time only on one side, it's going to have a split. So we're going to split it between nitrogen and hydrogen, which means that once again, this side here is going to become positive, the electron's going to be up there. But what it actually says to us, if we just go over here and have a look, it says nitrogen on the hydrogen leg, this side has more electron time than that side does, right? But the electron does go to the hydrogen side, which means overall that on that leg here, okay, on that leg of the molecule, we've got a situation where we've got, and I like to use my, uh, these nitrogen and three hydrogens. Those of you who've 
done the other courses will see that I use these a lot. Here's my nitrogen, okay? This is the molecule of nitrogen. Then we've got our three hydrogens that are sitting in like that, okay? All right? But now we've got to try somehow and get this to be equal, right? Like, sort of like that, right? But now what the problem is this, that's not the best shape for them. They can actually spread out like this, can't they? All right? which is in fact what they do, okay? They're gonna spread out like so. They're gonna form this shape like that, right? So we've got these guys down here, and we've got the lone pair up there on the top, sitting up here, because it's pushing them down around. Remember we did it with this one before? It's pushing them down around the surface. So that's why in this situation, they said, what is the shape of this? And you would then go back and you'd say, it is tri Trigonal, and it's trigonal pyramidal. Right? It's a trigonal pyramidal molecule. Okay? Always look when you're doing these things, look at the lone pairs. If there's no lone pairs, like for example, um, aluminium chloride, aluminium trichloride, or boron trifluoride, or boron trichloride, in that situation you don't have a lone pair, do you? So they can spread around and they can lie on the one plane. They don't have to push away from each other because they're all trying to be as far away from each other as they possibly can. The only other thing to note is that because we've got a lone pair here and this is polar, what is happening here is that this is exerting more of a force down. Okay, It's pushing these further in because the electrons are not always here to be able to counterbalance the force of the lone pair because the lone pair are there all the time. Okay, so they were born with the electron and they stay with that electron. Okay, so that's what our molecule looks like, and it's 107.8 degrees, maybe a bit of an extra 107.8 degrees is the bond angle, and it is now in our three-dimensional structure like that, right? Okay, so let's just, let's just continue with this, because now what we're saying is we're now going to look at, at some of the... Um, so I'm going to keep this all nice and order over there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to start looking at the actual stoichiometry of this, right? Now, the stoichiometry section is the recipe section, right? It's where we're going to mix everything together, right? We're going to mix it in certain ratios. We've spoken about it before. But the key of it is to put it into a table format, I believe, right? Um, and in the table format, it's pretty self-explanatory what you're looking for and where it's going to go, all right? Because it stands out what you're being asked to do. So I would like to do it in this fashion here. I say to myself, all right, first of all, put down the balanced chemical reaction, okay? And we're going to go step for step in the table. And I've introduced a few other bits and pieces into it. Some not totally, absolutely realistic given the, 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 the reaction itself, but let's say, 10 grams of nitrogen is mixed with 15 liters of hydrogen at STP. Calculate the amount of ammonia produced in grams. Assume the reaction goes to completion. Right. So now they have told us that we now are now going to have to look for how much of this and how much of that. So first of all, let's put down the balanced reaction. N2 gas plus H2 gas goes to NH3 gas. Let's balance the reaction and we say, right, we've got to have two nitrogens there and three over there. Then I like to put down here the recipe, which is essentially the mole ratio. I very often do it in different color. One plus three to give to two, which means one cup to three cup to get two cups. Then my next step is to draw a line under that. And then I say, right, I put in here what I have been given or required to find and I've been given over here let's just check 10 grams of nitrogen 10 grams and they've given us um, 15 liters at STP of hydrogen okay now the moment you see STP standard temperature pressure what we've got to do is we've got to immediately alert ourselves to the fact that that requires the use of the 22.4. OK, 
okay? Because where we're heading in all of this is we're going to get to moles. We, the next step is we say, okay, required to find, they want to know how much hydrogen. Okay, draw a line across there. I draw a double line down here because that's my reaction wall, right? This here is my activated complex. Remember? This side is product. And this side is reactants. Right? So we've got products and reactants. Okay? We go up to the activated complex and we go down to the product side. Then the next thing is to say, right, we need to put in molecular mass. Okay? What is the molecular mass? Now, obviously, when it's the molecular mass that they're talking about, you're only going to do deal with the ones that you're dealing with. If there's a lot of other data in there that you're not being needed, you don't have to go and work out the molecular mass of everything across the board. Only the ones that you've actually been given information and you're going to be dealing with, right? Just to save a bit of time. Sometimes a lot of students go and they fill it all in when it's not necessary. So molecular mass of nitrogen, we say, right, what have we got? It is 28 grams, because why? N is going to be 14 grams per mole. But the nitrogen molecule's got two. So each one of those is 14. So it's a 14 and a 14. So it's a 28 grams per mole. G and I say per one mole over there. How do we convert this 15 liters of, at STP, right? Do you remember that one mole of any gas is 22.4 cubic decimeters? Remember that? Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, we've got a conversion. One mole is 22.4 cubic decimeters. And what is a cubic decimeter? It's a liter, isn't it? So it's equal to 22.4 liters, right? That's what we're heading for. So we now know that. And lastly, we need to work out the um, molecular mass of this one. Of that, it's 14 is the nitrogen and three hydrogens. So we've got 14 plus 3 times 1, which is equal to 17 grams per one mole. Right. The next step is to put in M. Oh, not M, N. Number of moles. Sorry to put in N, which is number of moles, okay? What are we going to do? We're going to say, right, how do we work this out? This is where so many uh, uh, sadly have a problem. What we're going to do is we say, right, if 28 grams is equal to one mole, right, I've been given 10. Is that going to be less than one or more? Well, 28 is one, 10 must be less. So therefore, it's going to be the small one over the big one. 10 divided by 28, and that gives us a, a 0 0.3571 moles, okay? And we do the same thing. We say, right, one mole is that, therefore, how many moles is 15 liters? Well, if one is 22.4, we've only got 15, so it must be less than one put the small one over the big one. So it's 15 over 24.6696. That's 15 over 22.4. Okay, which gives us that. This side we have no idea. Right. The next step is we say, now here's another trigger. If they don't ask you for limiting reactants, but they've given two reactants, okay, the chances are that one of them could be a limiting reactant, right? So we then have to say to ourselves, okay, let's look for that limiting reactant because we have to find it, okay, in order to, uh, to decide which one's going to be left over and which one's going to be all used up. What I like to do is I like to say, okay, I start with my 0 0.3571. So we'll say 0 0.3571 and let's just for clarity change the color here. So I've got 0.3571. 3571 moles, correct? If I have that, how many do I need on the other side? I need to react with that. I need, now we do, when we've got number of moles at this point, okay, this is where you 
apply recipe from here. You apply it when you've got n the number of moles, right? So we say, okay, I've got 0 0.3571, that's, that's how much I've got physically. Therefore, how much do I need? I need three times that, don't I? Which is going to be equal to 1.0713. Then I go and I say, right, now, that's how much I need. How much have we got? We've only got 0.6696, which means that I haven't got enough, which means that my limit is going to be the hydrogen is the one that's going to go all the way through. Okay. Let's just go and do it the opposite way around, just for com completeness sake. Let's start with, let's say I had 0 0.6696. This is what we've got. Okay. Just let me go back onto this one quickly and put in green over here. This is how much we have got. Got, and we then work out need. Now we go back and we say, okay, got that much. How much would I need if I went this way? I've got that much of it. I would need to divide that by 3, which gives me 0 0.2232. Moles, right? So we have got enough. We've got 0 0.3571 moles, okay? That's a critical step in this. We always go and look at what, what, and do it both ways. Just check yourself. So I've got this much. That's physically here. How much of this do I need to react with it? In this case, I had to multiply it by 3. And then look and see if we've got enough moles of it, right? Then go to the next one and start on the one, I start with the second reactant and say, right, I've got that much, work out how much I need of the other one. We divided it by three. That means that we can now look and say, have we got enough? Well, yes, we have got 0.3571 moles. Then what I do is I, and this is entirely up to you, I draw a line here. Okay, actually just a shorter one. Then I say, right, I am now going to go ahead with my reactant 0.2232 plus 0.6696 and then we can work out how much of the nitrogen we're going to get, correct? And from there it yields, okay, it yields 0.4464 which is 2, it's 1 as to 2, right? So the ratio, it looks like this, doesn't it? Okay, pure ratio, 1 as to 2 and we've got 0.2232 and 2 on this side would have to be 0.4464 wouldn't it? 1 as to 2. How do you check? Well divide through by 0.2262 that makes that 1, it makes that 2 and if you look it makes the hydrogen 3. Okay, That's to preserve the ratios. Right? Uh, let me just erase this quickly. Okay. All of it comes down to the ratios of the moles. That's the key part of this whole process. Okay? And we say, right, therefore you yield, you give us uh, 0.4464. Okay, I'll just quickly go through this whole thing very quickly with you. If I divide through by the smallest number, that's what you always do. I get 1 there, I get 3 there, and I get a 2 there. Can you see the ratios? 1, 3, 2, which corresponds with the recipe in red 132 at the top. Okay, Right, so now we've worked out that. <clears throat> then we now say, okay, we're going to get 0.4464 moles, aren't we? But they've asked us how many grams. Okay, Well, we've got point, let's go again, 17 grams is one mole. Now we've got 0.4464 moles so it's going to be less than that, isn't it? It's going to be 0.4464 times 17. Okay? And if you work that out, 0.4464 times the 17, you get 7.588. Okay? <clears throat> Similarly, if it was at STP, let's just add in, um, say NH3 at STP. Let's work out how many liters we've got. Well, we've got 0.44, this is not a question up top there, 
0.4464 um, moles, right? Therefore, when we say one mole, remember STP, use the 22.4. Therefore, 0.44 is going to be, 0.44, to work it out quickly, it's going to be 0.4464 um, times 6, 4 times 22.4, that's going to be 9.999 decimeters cubed. Let us say that that is 10 decimeters cubed. That's approximately 10 liters, right? So that we can do as well, okay? That is that side of it, right? Now, the next part of the question is they say, okay, we are now going to say, let's just read it. They say, right, if the ammonia is placed under pressure of 200 kPa and a temperature of 200 degrees, calculate the volume of the ammonia in liters. Well, there are two formulas, aren't they? Right? There is P, P, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And how do we deal with that? Quite simply, we say state 1 and we say state 2. Look what we're given and write them down. So if we've got P1, uh, V1, T1, we've got all those three, we can calculate that. They might give us only P2 and V2 and ask for T2. Got, got, and you need that one. So that's what you do with those. They're very simple. Just remember just as a hint, always convert your pressure to Pascal, which is Newtons per square meter, right? And remember, kilo Pascal is times 10 to the 3. Similarly, convert your temperature to degrees Kelvin. You don't have to for those, but it's advisable to use Kelvin. In other words, you plus 273 degrees um, Celsius. The next side of it is we say, okay, um, yep, got it. And the last one then is our volume is going to be into cubic meters, right? The other formula that you've got for all this is PV equals NRT, right? Now, obviously in this case, we know the number of moles because they say the amount of gas that we produced, we are now going to put into a different temperature. So let's work it out. Let's look and see, have they given us P? Well, that's yes. It's standard temperature and pressure, right? That's where uh, it was started. Now we've changed it. Now we're saying we're going to put it up to 200. So what we said is at STP we had our 0.44 moles. Now we're going to put it up. So the pressure, okay, that we're going to be looking at is under pressure of 200 times 10 to the 3 Pascal. Okay. Um, V, unknown. N, number of moles. We said in this case we had 0.4464. Uh, moles, right? And R is the gas constant of 8.31. Therefore, and our temperature is going to be, uh, they've given us 200, sorry, 200 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 473 degrees Kelvin, okay? Then what do we do with this? Well, we just bang it straight into the formula and we say, therefore, the P 200 times 10 to the 3 it times V is equal to number of moles uh, in 0.4464 times molar gas constant 8.31 times 473 Therefore, the volume that we're going to end up with is going to be equal to uh, 0.00877 cubic meters. Let's take that down. We say, right, cubic meters down to decimeters cubed. That's one step and it's volume. So I'm going down. So I times by a thousand, which is going to be one, two, three, eight point seven seven decimeters cubed or 8.77 liters. Okay, 
That's how we deal with that one, right? So we've dealt now with the, um, the uh, um, ammonia, all right? And the next part we're going to deal with is the ammonium iron, okay? Which we're going to, and I'll deal with that in the second section because, as I said, we're trying to keep these two to, to effective downloads of, of 20 minutes or so, and I see I've gone over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just break it here, and then I'll continue with the next one, where we'll deal with the ammonium ion, and then we'll start moving into acids and bases, and we'll do some um, titrations, okay, which is working out various bits and pieces. And we'll also look at, um, at the pH scale as well.